maybe a bit more precise. How come complement each other? What what size do you miss or do you have? And what's genuine? I've been talking a lot. You want to say something? How do we complement each other? The way Jim and I complement each other is it's like Jack Spratt. Mm. What's that poem? Jack Spratt could eat no lean. His wife could eat no fat. Yeah. 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 Well, that explains it all, doesn't it? He's lean. He, he, I, who's fat? Am I fat or you fat? Well, I was thinking of you and the fat in the sense that the metaphor would be because you're more elaborate in your songwriting yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. more lean in my songwriting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim's more elaborate in his... I mean, lyrically and musically, his songs are more elaborate and mine are less elaborate, so I... I but we're writing about kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. A lot we're of writing about the same thing in almost in opposite ways. Yeah. And since we're writing about the same thing in opposite ways, I'm never going to crowd Johnny's territory, and Johnny's never going to crowd my territory, because you know we can we can work freely with all of our ideas, knowing that there's already thematically a place that they work. So that that way we can kind of let our musical ideas bounce around and not have it affect what's essential in the songs. Did you have to talk about it? I mean, how how you would want to write the songs, or it just blew naturally? We. Uh, I told him to send me a bunch of his lyrics, and then I started going back, listening to music I'd written, and looking at songs that I thought had or were sympathetic to the ideas that I wanted to put on the album. And so we just started picking songs from this huge selection of songs. I had a big pile of songs, he had a big pile of songs. Uh, when I got up there to record with him and Willie, uh, I didn't feel like the lyrics that I'd written were as strong as the lyrics he'd written, so we concentrated more on his lyrics, and I tried to contribute more musically than I normally would. You know, normally I'd say, "Well, I'm a songwriter. Let me put my songs, my, my words in there." But he's a he writes better lyrics than me, I think. So, I don't, I don't think so. Well, I do. <laughs> what do you think? What do I think? It's not going to hurt my feelings if you tell the truth, Will. As far as who's a better lyricist? lyricist? Yeah, because he was saying that he, he, he likes Johnny's. Well, of course they're both going to say that. I mean... Well, you always like other people, you know. I mean, I think it's... Yeah. No, that's, that's you you like other people. people. I, think it, I think it was more a case of just trying to find the, the right songs from both camps and make an album. I mean, that's what a collaboration is, you know? And yeah, so, but Johnny's got 200 great songs. Like, Johnny's partner, Dave, the engineer, sat there and played me song after song, old songs to Johnny's that Johnny's probably forgotten he ever wrote, which are as good as any song I've ever written. And I might have 10 songs like that, and he's got hundreds. Uh, I bet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. See, I'm going to prove this scientifically. I once, uh, <laughs> when I was a cab driver in New York City, I picked up Allen Ginsberg in my cab, and he, uh, among other idiotic claims, told me that he, he could prove scientifically that Bob Dylan was the greatest vocalist in the history of music. And I said, you mean like Enrico Caruso, you know, like uh, Beverly Sills, <laughs> like Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. <laughs> he said, note for note, he could scientifically prove to me how one gets for dead. I believe that I closed the partition at that point and <laughs> shut him out. <laughs> there's a there's a point when you just don't feel like listening to idiocy anymore. Uh, yeah.